Steve Lutis, 53 years old. Well, I didn't graduate from high school. I dropped out of high school because I was, uh, I thought alcohol and drugs were my, that's where I wanted to lead. I just checked out of society per se. So I was basically just partying and having a good time. So unfortunately, I didn't think my schooling was that important to me at that time. This area is really, well, you got Milwaukee and a lot of the breweries and well, we had to keep them companies going, so we, we drank. We drank and partied quite heavily when we were, when we were young. And during that time, I had phoned my wife, and we got pregnant. And, you know, there was some things there that I wasn't... We ended up together, but we weren't married, and we had, had our oldest daughter. And I was, I was afraid. I was quite afraid because now I have to not use I have not you know I, I can't drink I mean I shouldn't be drinking I shouldn't because I got a family and I didn't know how I was going to take care of them and my dad worked down at uh, Kimberly Clark at the time and so that was how I basically got into the working in the mill a lot of people that got hired down there were it was family if if your father worked there you were hired and that's how and then when you moved up in the line of progression, it was that's we were a union, and we would move up into the line of progression, and and that's how we would pick the foreman. You know, the guys you would you would get into a certain age bracket, and then you would be asked to be a foreman, and and that's how you that's how things ran. That's how it worked. So I thought, great, I'm making a decent wage. I'm I'm able to put food on the table. I can support my family, and this is wonderful. Then I got into recovery. In, in 1983 so I got hired in 79 and 83 I got recovery so things really started to pick up you know it, it really I was able to purchase a home um, then we we ended up having more children and and we had a good wage the scale uh, the paper mill was was uh, thriving uh, and I and I was happy and I was good at what I did I would uh, at the end I was uh, running the biggest paper machine, number seven. I felt very good and very knowledgeable in, in what I did. And um, I, I figured this is it. I'm going to stay here until, you know, I, I retire. I never thought that the Kimberly Paper Mill would close its doors on us. I mean, because it was always profitable. We always worked. We had a really good crew. You know, we made top world, we were a world-class operation. And we were constantly told this, that we, we had these, these meetings once a month where they would share with us the numbers on how things were going. And so we knew that we were a profitable mill. So to, in the back of our minds, nobody, nobody saw it coming, that they would, when New Page took over, that, that they would close the Kimberly Mill. First, we were just a little local, and then we went to the paper, and I, I, I think we were with the United Steel Workers at the end. The United Steel Workers, you know, once they, I don't know what they could have done. I really, I think they did everything that they could possibly have done to show that this was a m mistake to close the Kimberly Mill because, because it was. It was a world-class operation, you know. We were second to none. I worked the night shift on September 11th, 2008 was the last, that was the last, um, I don't know, they didn't make paper, but that was when we were there last. I walked out on, uh, that would have been the morning of the 12th, uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning, and we were done, and that was it. I think at the time when the Kimberly Mill shut down, uh, there was over 600 of us, and it just, boom. And, and, and this whole valley, there was, there was uh, I don't know how many, how many paper mills, and Right now, I don't know that there's maybe two or three that are operating out of probably a dozen or so. So it's really, really scary to watch, you know, because with one mill shutting down, it affects so many other businesses. It, it affects restaurants. It affects the people that service the mill, the outside contractors. It's not just the 600 employees with their families. It's, it's thousands of people, children, husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, you know, 
brothers and sisters and children. It's just unbelievable. My health, I've, I've been told my, by my doctors that uh, the mill was killing me uh, health-wise. Just, um, I, was, I was really, I did have a mini stroke a year ago March. And I had, I, it, there was just a lot of issues, a lot of just dealing with everything, the stress. And I think that's what kicked it off was the stress. I was blessed because of the situation that I'm in, that I do have insurance through my wife and my daughters started a, a business. I was able to finance that through having a job at the mill. So I was able to help them get started financially to get that up and going. And now it's kind of, you know, kind of came around full circle where I'm in a pretty, I'm in a pretty good spot per se, because my wife enjoys her job and what she's doing. So I basically am doing the housework and the cooking and doing the things. I tried to go back to school. I did get my GED. Uh, so that was a good thing. But if it wasn't for the mill, I wouldn't be here today doing, you know, being able to watch. The company now has 25 employees, and it's because of what the Kimberly Mill has given us that we're able to support 25 other people that, you know, with insurances and, and benefits and, and have a full-time staff rather than having um, um, freelancers, you know, that we can help people get raise their families and see, and it's just, a, it's a wonderful thing. I think pretty much since Reagan's era, whenever that was in the 80s, I believe, um, things have just been going downhill. I just don't know how this country is going to continue to sustain, sustain itself at the rate that we're going. I don't, with the businesses closing, you know, I, I, I almost feel like it's becoming a third world where you have or you have not. And the middle class is is being squeezed right out.